Ben Simmons. So fun to watch him. Go up game. and get it, young man. Boom. All right, the guy who threw him that pass, I, CJ oh. McConnell. That might be the best play in McConnell's NBA career. But look how far Oh, he went. stop, man. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Jeez, what a oh. basic play. He may look more difficult, but he's left handed. He's Nets, a problem, though. He Nets is a and problem. Warriors. Thank you. Joe Harris gets the block oh, on Draymond Green. Oh, hold on. Let me watch this again. Because this must have been the cleanest block in NBA history. Because Draymond doesn't whine after. <laughs> Draymond just owns it. Draymond's like, oh, yeah, you got me. You no, got he me. Had to you eat got that me. L right there. He got to eat that one. Did the ball hit off of him also? Okay, this one is Draymond who gets blocked again, this time by the Rock. Oh! This, that I'm can't so happen. glad this made the show. That can't happen. Ugh. I woke my wife up last night when I saw that and, and yelped. It was like 12.30 East Coast time. Watching this game. I'm mad at the Warriors, by the way. I shouldn't have had to stay up to watch the third quarter of this game. It was too close. They're up by 20 after one. Close out in the first half, Golden State. I need some sleep, man. Draymond, you got to be a little more athletic than that. I mean, you're 6'8". Nick would have done it. <laughs> yes. Not All as bad right. as a seven-footer yesterday. No. Let me uh, let me let me keep you keyed in to where we are with the Levy and Bell and his situation in Pittsburgh. On Monday, the story was the Steelers might franchise Bell. On Tuesday, the story was the Steelers would probably franchise Bell. On Wednesday, the story is the Steelers did franchise Bell. Thursday hasn't happened yet. All this coming off a. Of a disappointing season for the Steelers that ended in a loss to the Jaguars. All right, Nick, with Bell franchise and the future of Big Ben up in the air, is the Super Bowl window closing for the Steelers, especially with those three playing the way they did last year? Well, right. So the Steelers are in the discussion, if not at the top of the list, for most successful franchise in the history of the NFL. So as a franchise, their window will be open as long as any team's is open. But what we're talking about is this triplets, the modern-day triplets, Ben, Brown, Bell. And to me, not getting a long-term deal done with Le'Veon Bell, it is hard for me to envision L. Bell in his current form as one of, if not the best running back in the league, being a Pittsburgh Steeler after this year. So what's the window for this iteration to reach what is their actual potential, mm -hmm. which is making at least making a Super Bowl? It's the 2018 season. It is this season because... To me, what they, the situation they placed themselves in with Le'Veon Bell is, if he's unproductive, well then he's no longer a top five running back, right? And if he's hyperproductive and still a top five running back, he's going to hit true free agency. And he's not going to have any love lost for Pittsburgh, who wouldn't give him his deal these last two years that he wanted. So they are going to look back on this past season, I believe, as a wasted opportunity, particularly if they are not able to do what I thought they could have and should have done this year, which is reach, if not win, the Super Bowl. Uh, one thing with respect to Pittsburgh and how they've done things over the decades, they're going to put a Super Bowl. Every five years, they're going to be fighting for a Super Bowl. So their window with Tomlin, with Big Ben, when you have a quarterback that's won a couple Super Bowls, you have to always think, wow, how long is he going to be able to do that? So for me, the window is more predicated on the quarterback than it is on a running back. If we look at the NFL, we look at the playoffs, what leading rusher in the NFL has dominated the playoffs and led his team to the Super Bowl? It's just we haven't seen it. Quarterbacks have led their teams or defenses have led their teams to the Super Bowl. It's the last so, one, Terrell Davis. So you overvalue yeah. the running back, especially when it comes playoff time. And also, by the time you get the playoffs, they have had either 12 or 16 games, and there is no one on the field that's been hit more than running backs. So when you start to see the productivity start to decline in the postseason, is because of the nature of the position. And if you are a dominant running team, by that time, defense can get keyed in, and they can eliminate that running attack. So for me, I believe the running back, it is back in as far as being a key focal point of the offenses. But when you're trying to pay and you're trying to put a championship team out there, Pittsburgh's got tremendous needs defensively. They need a middle linebacker. They need secondary help. There's other things that I believe are a longer-term priority that they can't give him $15 million a year. There's no running back in the NFL that does, unless you're playing on a losing team. If you go to a team and they got $100 million under the salary cap, $80 million, you can go there. 
Like, he might be able to, after the season, go to a team that is a loser and get that kind of money. He will not get that kind of money on a championship caliber team. But, CeCe, that speaks to why Pittsburgh didn't want to be in this position to franchise him again. Because you're saying a winning team can't pay him $15 million against the cap. Well, this year they are. Like, it's not a long-term commitment, but they're, it's going to be harder for them to address those needs this offseason because this year with the franchise tag, it's $14.5 million for El Bell because they tagged him last year. So they are paying a super premium when the best running backs in the league don't even get $10 million per year for Le'Veon this one season because they couldn't reach the long-term deal. I think it's better to have a larger cap number now to be strapped with a four- or five-year deal sure. with a guy that you know is going to decline halfway through. Through that contract. Well, let's talk about the guy. He, he had, you know, they, they ran him 400 times last year. Do you see him doing that again this year? Was that part of the reason maybe the Steelers are hesitant to, to, to sign him for longer than a year just because they don't think they can get the same productivity out of him? Um, I don't think so. I mean, he's truly one of the great talents. I don't think teams count carries as far as longevity. I haven't seen it. People bring it up, but they can't give any concrete examples, all right? He is a great football player. They are not monitoring him. Well, I wonder how many carries he has now. Well, I wonder if he could do this. So this is all about money. So because they think he can do it. Well, it's, it's about the about position, too. Like, how long is a guy going to have be able to have 400 touches? So it has something to do with it. I don't believe that it, his productivity or how many reps they're giving him calculates into are they going to give him a long term contract? I believe the money they're paying for quarterback, the money they're paying to Antonio, and the needs they have on the defense, they dictate that we can't give him a long-term contract. Uh, I mean, I, I do believe that there is only a certain number of carries or touches or whatever a guy has in his body. We don't know what that number is until after their career. But what we do know is since 2013, nobody has been used more than Le'Veon Bell. And I would imagine, well, I... Tell me, Chris, I think what, what you've said to me in the past is they are not during the season adjusting any game plan or any usage based on his contract situation. But in the offseason, when they're evaluating, do we want a long-term investment in this guy, don't they look at? They would not give him a long-term contract if he had 200 carries. Okay. That's, all right. So that's what and I just I'm just telling you, I've watched this all along. People say it. You cannot prove that to be. When you have a player, especially a player you've drafted, he's your property. You have to try to utilize him. I mean, they've been in Super Bowl contention. You think that they would give away 10 or 15 carries to take them out of their chance of winning another Super Bowl? No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. That's where we agree. I mean, you cannot get to being one of the most successful franchises ever over the course of many, many decades by making decisions that way. We're, we're, I think, talking past each other a little bit. We agree on that. What I'm saying is when you are looking for, not about how you use him now because, oh, he's on the franchise tag. So what do they say so, about Antonio Brown? He's got 100 catches multiple years in a row. Oh, I think that there is not. What we do know is, when you say you can't prove it, what we do know is there is a long history of running backs the year after being highly used, be it Larry Johnson, Jamal Anderson, Terrell Davis. We can go down the list. It's basically been since... Earl Campbell was the last one who dealt with that. Besides Bible. Earl Campbell, none of those running backs are as good as El Bell. Okay. All right. All right. Look at their career. Look at their numbers. But the so you're not comparing apples to oranges. El Bell is a prime time. I mean, he is a big time. If he's able to put another four to six years together, he would go down as one of the great backs so, all time. So why doesn't Pittsburgh want to try to keep him around? The, the pie way. is only so big, Jenna. Okay. All right. And so you already have a disproportionate yes. amount of the money going to the offensive side. All right. Antonio Brown's making 18 million dollars a year. Ben is being paid at an elite level. You can't have all that money of their salary cap in your backfield. That's the point. That's the point you've made in the past when we were talking before the show. You mentioned it that the Steelers made their decision on whether or not they're going to give El Bell this huge deal he wanted, not this offseason, but when they decided to give Antonio Brown that contract. When you make the decision, despite Antonio's Facebook Live, despite some of the things that are not ideal for the team setting, we're going to look past all that and make you, have you set the market at wide receiver? Mm -hmm. We're going to pay you $18 million a year. We are going to do things that in Pittsburgh we don't typically do. Remember when... What, oh, was Mike Will not Mike Williams, the fast receiver they had that I can't remember. Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace, thank you. When Mike Wallace, he wanted a big deal. They said, okay, that's great, we'll trade you. Like, with Antonio Brown, once they made that decision, in your eyes, that's when they knew we they can't have the highest-paid wide receiver right. and the highest-paid running back. Right.
Antonio Larso, the hardest worker in the building in Pittsburgh. El Bell, uh, sometimes late, sometimes some of those things, they come into play when you go and ask for that kind of money. All right, coming up, is Russell Westbrook actually to blame for Oklahoma City's struggles? Oh, yeah, let's blame it. Oh, what let's is this? Doing what is this, the herd? Colin setting the agenda? All right, here comes.